Fermented foods are basically probiotics, live microbes, but actually in food, as opposed to in a, in a capsule or in some synthetic version. So these are things that have been, <coughs> we've had them for thousands of years in our, in our diets. And we're talking about uh, the, the live cultures that are in yogurts, they're in cheese, they're in kefir, which is fermented milk. We're talking um, uh, sauerkraut, which is fermented cabbage. We're talking kombucha, which is fermented tea, uh, kimchi, miso, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all these ferments. And compared to probiotics, they generally have lower doses, but, um, but most of them, apart from maybe cheese and yogurt, have there's many more species, many more types, many more diversity of microbes than you'd find in a probiotic capsule. So the average uh, yogurt has maybe three species, uh, but in once you get to kefirs and kimchi and kombuchas, you can get anything between 20 and 40 different types of uh, microbe, mainly bacteria, but also some yeast. 20 to 40 versus two or three. So there's like yes. enormously more different types of bacteria. Exactly. So my way of thinking is that um, probiotics, when you take a capsule, like, you know, Saccharomyces, it may be very individualized whether it's going to work for you or not, depending on your community. Is it going to respond to that guy, yes or no? And that sort of, we sort of see that in the results. Not every, not, you don't get a 100% response because, you know, some people just don't have the gut community that's going to be receptive to this new guy coming in and, uh, you know, telling him what to do. Uh, whereas my view is that fermented foods give you a much broader uh, choice so that you've got all these different microbes that are quite happy living together in the food and collectively they, they're going to have a better chance of having an effect on, on your gut and restoring it to health. And we know from other studies, um, randomized controlled trials of fermented food, that getting five or six little portions a day in a few weeks can actually reduce inflammation and boost your immune system. So there is now science behind um, these, these fermented foods. So that was my rationale for saying to you, get as many of these different ones as you can, go for diversity, because that way you get different bugs in your kefir as your, your kimchi and your kombucha, and hopefully some of them are going to work, right? I was just sort of throwing the kitchen sink at your problem and saying, well, you know, I, we don't know which ones are the best or not. We don't really know yet how to personalize it for you yet. Hopefully Zoe will sort that out in the future, but we don't know that yet. So that was the, that was the thinking. And there have been some, and there are some studies showing that fermented foods do work in people with gut problems uh, and, and diarrhea, et cetera. It's not as well documented as probiotics, but there, there's, there's some data. So I immediately bulk ordered the kombucha and the kefir and the kimchi, <laughs> Tim, that you recommended. And I was, in, uh, I was in London at the time. How do you figure out um, whether this is going to be something that is going to be full of these live bacteria or actually like it has the stamp on it. And I know that sadly, there's actually, there's a lot of things out there that say, for example, kombucha on it, but don't really meet the criteria. Tim, can, how, how, did, how do you differentiate that? And then maybe just tell me, you know, how did you advise me specifically what to use? The first thing is to look at the label very carefully. And if it's got, um, so say you're taking kombuchas or, or water kefirs, which are generally or sort of fruit kefirs, uh, which are sort of similar, uh, you check there isn't huge amounts of sugar in it or large amounts of artificial sweeteners because we know artificial sweeteners have negative effect on the gut and the gut microbes. So you definitely don't want anything with that in it. And you also need to check that it hasn't been pasteurized. And uh, it might be in tiny little letters, you know, that it's been pasteurized. So it may have been perfectly done, but to give it a long shelf life, it's, it's been just slightly pasteurized, which means slightly dead. And so, so the key thing is like you've got to make sure it's alive. You've got to make right? sure it's one of the things alive. you said to me. It's like there's a lot of ways that potentially stuff might. And, and you can tell it, it shouldn't have a shelf life of two years, for example. Um, that would tell you it's definitely dead. Uh, some of the kombuchas can have a shelf life of, uh, or, and kefirs and things, and, and kimchi for a couple of months. Usually it's shorter than that, but that's the most you should ever get it. And uh, on kombuchas, you should have a, you often see a little sediment at the bottom 
showing that it's actually forming something live. Uh, it's real. It hasn't just been so filtered and processed that there's nothing left. And the, uh, it shouldn't have lots of fruit and other stuff added to it as well, because that also is a sign that it's been ultra processed and isn't real. And often if you, you open it, uh, it should have a fizz. I think the, the one I said, oh, I know, Jonathan, you like chuckling goat because uh, it's really smelly and it's got a real f fizz on it when you open it. So you really know it's live, you know, so it's I, like, I, I, and it's got a very pungent taste. That's so. right. So I had this experience. You have to actually go and look at a video online for how to open it because when you open it, it explodes so much that like a good chunk of it ends up sort of pouring around the side and you need to collect it so you don't lose it. So again, quite uh, my, my children thought I was mad, but also thought this was really funny. Um, and it was definitely stronger than the average uh, kefir. And I felt really good because it felt like it was definitely medicine. This was definitely taking this properly. Uh, and you also recommended, I think, uh, a kombucha, which again, you'd seen made. So you were like confident. That's that right. I've been to the Momo factory in London. I'd seen what was done and they nearly all got a little sediment in it. I knew you were very skeptical of the kombuchas. Uh, up to that point, but um, I was but I was all in on anything that was going to help with the. <laughs> I was not worrying about my blood sugar at this point. Let's say this is like a hundred percent focus on my gut. You can be conned very easily in this game. I think that's the, that's the message for people. You know, you can be taking the best intentions. You're taking something that's pasteurized. It's got so many artificial ingredients in it. It's not useful. It's too sweet. Um, you know, if you can't make it yourself, re really carefully and realize that if it's really cheap. It's also unlikely to be the real thing because it has a shelf life of a year or so and they can mass produce it. The sauerkraut that I grew up on was in a, a can and it was the second ingredient was vinegar. And that, that is not actually fermented sauerkraut. When you make pickles or when you make sauerkraut, it may surprise some people, but what you want to look for in the store is that actually the ingredients are whatever the plant is plus water and salt. Water and salt is how you actually create fermentation. So, and again, I, I feel more confident when it says live active cultures or live probiotics on it. So I'd love to r run forward just one month. What has happened at this point? And so the good news is that my number of good microbes have doubled at this point. Yeah, I think if we were to conceptualize like where you started in the beginning, let's, let's use the term eubiosis. Eubiosis is the term that we, we would um, give to uh, a microbiome that's in balance. And the good guys are outweighing the bad guys. That's what you had, 38 good ones, six bad ones. Right, They're, the good guys are in control of that environment. It's a stable, healthy environment that is hard to shift. But unfortunately, the fastest way to cause a shift in this microbiome is...